Hi, I'm Tim Ellis. Thanks for joining us for Langway Live. Tonight's special guest has a brand new star-studded live show coming up on the Lucy Darling Facebook page. You can catch it on May 15, or you can stay tuned because we're about to talk to the creator of Lucy Darling herself, Carissa Hendricks. pandemic for something to do but i've decided i'm only going to learn songs that have swear words in them uh-huh so i you can't sing them? any of them for you because it has oh we can bleep I don't know you. That... we can bleep you we can yeah, yeah. i don't i now i just don't want to because i i've never had to that's sort of my way out is that <laughs> if i only learn songs that have swear words in them no one's ever going to make me sing and you called my bluff <laughs> so. <laughs> so where are you located for your lockdown I am in Edmonton, Canada with uh, Miranda Allen and Richard Lee. Uh, um, they are two of my closest friends and they are a couple. So I am the <laughs> third wheel in every dinner and conversation uh, <laughs> indefinitely. I am the indefinite third wheel. Do you get sent to your room occasionally? I don't get sent anywhere. I leave of my own free wish, <laughs> free will. and. And, uh, and I like being, I'm, I'm, I'm like right in the middle of, um, like an introvert and an extrovert. So I find that <laughs> I'm either, I'm never happy. I'm always either like, oh, I wish I had more alone time or, or I've been alone too long. <laughs> I saw in some of your uh, clips, you had a, a barrel or something to climb into. Yeah. So Miranda is a, an escape artist and we've just been, um, how do I say this without giving secrets away? Uh, at some point in her process of working on the barrel, I helped with some of the the elements of the barrel escape. So she gets into a, a barrel of wine and, and is submerged underwater and she has to unlock all these chains and get out. And it's a great magic trick, but also that barrel needs somewhere to live. So it lives in the living room and sometimes we put it in the videos because it's silly. It's not, not your quiet time barrel? <laughs> It is Miranda's quiet time barrel. Yeah. The problem is, is it's full of all of the stuff. Like in real life, it's full it's of the full stuff of you need for the act. So there's, it's, yes, it's full of wine. And so I'm it having a great full, pandemic. It was full. It was full at the start of the pandemic. We had to refill it three times. Yeah. Now, now we've moved on to gin. It's just great. It's just great. Now people you don't have to chug go, gin. People probably go going like, why, why is Carissa staying in someone else's house during the pandemic? Well, the truth is, of course, you don't have a house. You haven't had yes, one. Yes, I am uh, what I normally refer to as home full. I have so many places to stay and yet nowhere to live. Uh, so when the pandemic started, I was in Las Vegas because I had been helping a few people with uh, hula stuff. And I was, I was, you know, after I was done helping, I just, I got, I decided like, I don't even want to be at this hotel anymore. And I moved to business house where I normally, normally stay. I normally stay with Bizarro if I'm in Vegas because he's my favorite person in Las Vegas. And, uh, and it just seemed like, oh, I could wait the pandemic out here, stay away from the strip. Locals Vegas is fairly safe. Bizarro is one of my favorite people. Great. And then the Canadian government said, all citizens come home. We're canceling our travel insurance. And then I got on a plane and I came to Edmonton and uh, a few people offered me a place to stay. And this was by far the most enticing offer because I have my own room and I really like Miranda and, uh, and Richard and three people is a nice number of people for a pandemic because two people is one relationship. So you're either hanging out or you're alone, but three people is actually four kinds of relationships. So you're either alone or you're hanging out in one of three different sets of two or as a group of three. And so there's more variety of like kinds of interactions we can have. And four is too many. Four, four, I'm sure for some people is great, but um, have you ever heard of the third roommate problem? What's the third roommate problem? So I, I always thought of it as the fourth roommate problem because this only happens when I have four roommates and have when it's four people in a house, but it, it's never happened to me when there's three. So the idea of the third roommate problem is that if there are three people in the house, if there's two people in the house, 
either you didn't take out the garbage or I didn't take out the garbage. <laughs> if there's three people in the house, I know I didn't take out the garbage, but I don't really, I can't be certain which one of you took out the garbage. And I think there's something that never happens to me in three people situations, but when there's a fourth person for some reason, there, <laughs> it's always like someone's not pulling their weight and it's very hard to figure out who. And we're, we really find like with three people, it's really the division of labor is really intuitive and easy and everybody cooks and everybody cleans. And we have this elaborate home garden we've set up and I just got uh, a SCOBY today to start my own kombucha and <laughs> we're raising lots of little sprouts and we basically have turned the apartment into all of the things we could possibly need. As you call yeah, it, soda stream. HMS quarantine. <laughs> HMS quarantine. Yes. HMSS quarantine on Twitter. If you're curious about our adventures, uh, cause we sort of imagined the apartment to be a starship. And so, you know, it's a limited amount of space, but we're, we're exploring the great unknown. And we, Miranda and I spent a whole day painstakingly sewing a flag and that's the quarantine's flag. And if you know anything about flags, which why would you, because who knows about flags? It happens to be, um, the flag that represents a sh quarantine ship. So our, the flag for the HMS's quarantine is a quarantine flag. And we made it ourselves and we hung it on the balcony and it is one of our most prized positions. And also Miranda and I, cause we order things sometimes, we have to order things that they come in cardboard boxes. And we've been keeping the cardboard boxes and Miranda and I have between the two of us built like 10 cardboard structures out of this cardboard. Like the thing that my computer is sitting on right now is made of cardboard. Um, we built racks and stuff for all the plants out of cardboard. She built a whole desk out of cardboard. We're just, it is our building material. It brings us the things we need. Cardboard, you guys. Rapid prototyping. So, so really, I mean, the quarantine, depending on how you approach it, has really improved the quality of life for a lot of people. <laughs> um, I would still rather be <laughs> traveling and doing shows. Well, uh, look, the, 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 the planet's feeling better, pollution's down, wildlife's out in the streets. You know. Yes. <laughs> Those things are great. Those are great things. And I, but. I think that they're great. But I have been a live entertainer <laughs> my entire adult life since the age of 16. And this is not only the longest I've gone without performing for people and hearing live, here's, here's what happened. Um, let, me, let, me, let me give you an insight into my truth. I've been doing lots of live stream shows and they're fun and I'm glad I'm doing them. And it's nice to have something to look forward to. And it's you know really stretched my creative legs a lot and it's great. However, there's no applause. And that's not a thing you know you need until you're on a Zoom call for a corporate client and they have all the little faces up top and they all applaud and you you have to visit like it was so hard not to weep because i just saw people applauding spontaneously just like it, and it just felt so genuine because i had done a really cool thing and then like you just saw these little boxes of faces applauding and i was just like thanks thanks you guys and just you know it just really called attention to the fact that Stuff is weird, man. It's weird, you and I don't me. like really it. Love me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The <laughs> out comes the ukulele. I'll play some Johnny Cash for you. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, no, when, it's when fine. I'm fine. Hit, you you'd just done a whole series of shows. You were like you were like for the last twelve months. You have been on the craziest upward trajectory of any magician. I know of and okay the, the pandemic's like shh, that was the end of that yeah. but you did yeah. uh, a, a whole s series of shows at Chicago Magic Lounge and you recorded one which looks like a Netflix special uh, it was so well done um, thank you I so appreciate that because it was massively expensive <laughs> <laughs> really it costs money to do these things what are you talking about was, I thought, I thought you was, could call your friends and they do it for free oh, it was so expensive but you know what and I've told people this before, it was worth, I, I, he, I hope he never, he, the guy who made it, Jack, never hears this because he'll probably charge me. But if he charged me twice as much as he did for this, it still would not be as much as what it looks like it cost. Because it's, you're right, it's stunning. He did all the editing. 
he he recorded five shows. So the what you're gonna see is actually two shows that we've edited together into one show. And the show itself was 40 minutes, but we, or uh, sorry, 70 minutes, but we edited it down to an hour because there was so much in all the shows. There's just so much like improv and like little lines that feel great in the room, but in like this Netflix like specialty kind of thing, they they just don't, they just feel rambly, you know, like when, when you're in the energy and it ha it happened and you know that moment's never going to happen again, it's special, but in a video you're just watching other people have fun so we edited all that out and by we i mean he did all the work i did nothing i just did the show five times and paid him and he did all the hard work so good job jack <laughs> well let's take a look at a little clip so people get a taste of it darling have you read this i have not you have not should i read it to you now sure oh okay most people say no <laughs> since we're kind of doing something right now <laughs> But uh, I am nothing if not accommodating. Here we go. This is what's happening now. <laughs> Why? Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. I appear to have forgotten my glasses. Excuse me, where did I put those cursed... Ah, here they are. <laughs> <laughs> but these are empty. Oh. Yes, it's very sad. I don't suppose you wouldn't allow me a moment to refill them. I simply can't do anything on an empty liver. <laughs> I like the split between the clapping and the laughter. That was weird. <laughs> it always odd was my great grandmother that first told me I'd mix the perfect cocktail. That woman had a wit like a martini, dry and dirty. <laughs> we used to play the most dirty little games as a child. I mean. She would invent them so we could play with the neighbor boys. And this is my favorite one. She called it, um, what did she call it? Oh, yes, uh, hide and seek. <laughs> These are giggles of recognition. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know this game? Yes. Well, I thought it was just us. Oh, well, if everyone knows it so well, I don't suppose you wouldn't indulge me in a quick round? Yeah. Oh, good, I'm so excited. Okay, one, two, three, go. <laughs> okay, ready or not, here I come. Wah! Oh, I found you. <laughs> You're all very bad at this game. <laughs> you know, my grandmother was quite an odd sort of lady. She had an odd disposition, an odd sense of style, an odd number of eyes. <laughs> she was so odd, in fact, she used to present each of the newborn babies in my family with these engraved silver rattles. Oh, I, no, I'll explain. Uh, this was mine. <laughs> Adam, do you know what this is? That's a cocktail shaker. It is indeed. This is a martini shaker, of course. This in particular is a martini tiny. Just a little one. I mean, I was only a baby. <laughs> <laughs> or perhaps we could use this to play hide and seek instead of any of that tiresome running about. Does anyone want to play hide and seek with me? Yes. <laughs> oh, a volunteer! <laughs> that hardly ever happens. Adam, darling, I've, you, you run smart homes, right? Yeah. Are you smarter than the homes you run? Sometimes. We are going to find out. <laughs> Darling, in all your time deciding to uh, bring forth robots that will create the apocalypse, <laughs> have you ever discovered what the different sections of a martini shaker are called? No. This is a cup. <laughs> <laughs> you could have guessed is what I'm saying. What about this middle strain a bit? I'll give you a clue. I put the answer inside the question this time. <laughs> oh, you're so smart, just like the Holmes. <laughs> what about this top bit? I shall ask again. <laughs> Top, that's exactly right. Before I put the answer in the question. All right. From where you are sitting, can you see what I have in my hand just here? A cherry. A cherry, yes. Adam, darling, you and I are about to play a perfectly innocent game of hide the cherry. <laughs> Settle down. You are a Wednesday crowd. <laughs> Here is the game. I shall attempt to hide the cherry from your gaze, and each time I do, it's your job to guess where I might be hiding. Okay. Do you think you can do that? I'm on it. 
You're on it. Well, I thought that was a yes or no question, didn't you? <laughs> I'm learning so much from Adam. He's so smart. Okay, here we go. You ready? You ready? Okay. Your face has gone very serious. <laughs> Adam, where is the cherry? <laughs> Use your words. <laughs> yes, it's almost as if we named all the objects so you wouldn't have to point like a caveman. <laughs> it's sorry, one more time, loud? It's on the cup. Okay, good job. Didn't think we'd ever get there. <laughs> and now? In the cup. In the cup. You're doing very well. Why are you saying these answers like I'm the idiot? I don't understand. <laughs> Adam, darling, now this time was just a little bit sneaky, so I... Uh, Adam, where is the cherry? I think you want me to say in your hand. Yes, that's how the game works. <laughs> in your hand. In my hand. Okay, I would like to remind you it is a magic show. Yes. I would say under. You would say, these are the two options, yes. <laughs> would you like to commit to one? <laughs> Under the cup. <gasps> no, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> you fool. Okay. Adam, darling, don't you worry. You would have been wrong uh, either way. <laughs> I know I'm so bad. <laughs> Adam, darling, don't you fuss. Don't be mad at me. This was just a practice round so you would understand the rules of engagement. We shall begin again right now. <laughs> Adam. <laughs> Where is the cherry? <laughs> On the top of the cup. Well, technically it's on the bottom of the cup because the cup is upside down. <laughs> I know, thank you, Paul. And now? In the cup, you're doing so well. We're so proud of you. Now, this is where you got confused before. <coughs> Adam. <laughs> where is the cherry? Under the cup. Remember how last time was not under the cup? <laughs> I'm gonna stick with that. You're gonna stick with that? Then you'd be wrong. Probably. Do you really wanna stick there? Yes? Happy? Whoop, beam. Oh, poor Adam. <laughs> Guess number two. <laughs> in my hand, yes, it's never in the head. Not once has it ever been in the head. It's almost as if I was trying to guide you to another option that would happen at a magic show. In the shaker? In the shaker, the whole thing is a shaker. Okay, in the, in the lid? In the top, that we called the top only moments ago. It's been three minutes. <laughs> Inside the top, darling, of course, indeed, that is where she is. <laughs> Adam, darling, let's just forget about the big one for now. You seem confused for many reasons. Well, use the little one. Don't worry, they're usually more grateful. <laughs> I don't know if you noticed, but that was almost all female laughter. <laughs> Are you disparaging your friend in front of everyone? Yes. I'm coming for you later. Yes. Now we're on top of the top. I have not yet asked the question. <laughs> it's a little premature, darling. Did you get that one? Did you get that one? Did you get that one? Okay, I can move on then. Darling, where is the cherry? On top of the top. You're doing very well. That's everyone surprised. Okay. <laughs> and now? In the top. In the top. Now there's a question mark that has appeared in that word. That's nice. <laughs> Adam, darling, it's very important. Darling, you are never going to believe me, but there is a gentleman sitting two rows behind you who looks just like you. It's a bit eerie. Look. 
Adam, in a moment I'm going to ask you a question. I think perhaps you might already know what it is. But before I do, I'd like to remind you that it's impolite to mention a lady's undergarments in public. Uh, we understood. I'll wait till you're done your drink. Yes, you understand? Okay, good. Adam, where is the cherry? Oh, it's never in my head, not once. <laughs> and everyone is so surprised. <laughs> Guess number two. Under the cup. Under the cup, shit. <laughs> I was gonna say. Wait, which one? <laughs> This is a fun room tonight. You're all like, boob jokes, that's what we came here for. <laughs> so crazy. Okay. <laughs> Darling, you wanted under the cup, so of course that means it cannot be here inside the cup, inside the shark glass. There she is. <laughs> Darling, I have to say you've been a very good sport, a truly good man. And my grandmother always used to say that a good man's like a good drink. They make strangers more interesting, friends more agreeable, and get the stains out of your best satin. <laughs> so to you tonight, darling, we shall propose a toast. To your playful spirit and your hilarious job. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> I iconic Lucy Darling. Iconic Lucy Darling. Yeah, we've discovered that that is the piece that most people are familiar with when it comes to Lucy. It's like the thing people think about. Um, the whole idea of like me saying someone's name weird that has echoed through time and the where's the cherry. You know, the, the line that people most repeat about of mine is, is where's the cherry. So uh, somehow this has become the most iconic Lucy Darling routine, even though it is the only routine in my show where I did not build the prop myself, and that that hurts my heart. But whatever, things no, it, are what they are. It was the first routine we ever saw Lucy Darling do in Melbourne. Oh yeah, that's true. That is true. When she was um, born. Where I was, where 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 she was born. She is not me, <laughs> but where she was born. It's it's amazing because every year the Melbourne Magic Festival is how I track how far I've come because it all started, you know, almost three years ago now with her birth, with her place of origin. And so we know this year we're coming up on her being three years old. And it's crazy to think like, she's not even three yet. What is my life? And what how, it, well, how did you like become like the host of the magic castle suddenly? Like people do a show at the castle, maybe every two years at best. And you've done like, I think it was a uh, current time that 68 weeks at the castle this year. I don't know. <laughs> yes, that is correct. Um, yeah, I've, I've done definitely my, more than my share at the castle. Uh, I've hosted the palace. I've done the Peller. Uh, I have gotten very, very, very lucky with the Magic Castle. And um, I don't know why. It's, I mean... It's been really great. Second year in a row that I have been nominated for Stage Magician of the Year. Could not be more grateful. It just, it's just, I, I mean, I don't even know how to feel about it because it still doesn't feel real. And so, you know, I, when people talk to me about that stuff, it feels like they're talking to me about somebody else's life. So I, I'm a little disconnected from it when they go, oh, what's it feel like to do this? And I'm like, I don't know, it's probably great <laughs> for that other person who you're talking about because that's not me. As Lucy as a character, you can have that disconnect, which I think is a bit of a blessing because you do need to be able to step away from the character and just go back to, oh, I've got to go and buy groceries. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And it's nice to, to be able to take the character off at the end of a, a long night 
and just be a schlubby weirdo and not have anyone expect anything from me. And uh, although I will say, because <laughs> the, the there's a thing that happens when you have created a strong, lovable character that that you know is created deliberately to make people fall in love with her. And um, and this has not happened once. This has happened many times. But there was one time very specifically that kind of broke my heart. So I had a, there was a producer who was interested in using some of the Lucy Darling character as part of one of her projects. And so I was performing in Los Angeles at the Black Rabbit Rose and I invited her to come see the show and I gave her two tickets. So she thought she'd bring her mother because her mother's a big fan of magic. So they came to the show and loved the show. It was, it was a night that I was kind of particularly on. Uh, the audience gave me a lot to work with, like the improv sections really shone. And I finished the show, take all my makeup off, and I go out and they've stayed to say hi. And this is kind of what you do in theater is that if somebody offers you free tickets, you stay to stay to say hello, but that has not really translated in my experience from my theater experience to my magic experience. So I didn't expect them to be there, but these are theater people. So they had stayed to say hi. I felt bad for making them wait so long, but I had taken the time to completely get out of character. And, the, and her mother, her eyes were just glowing and she couldn't even finish this so amazing and she was so in love with the character and then we were talking and and you can kind of see her looking at me and she didn't quite know what to make of me because my real self and my lucy self are qu quite separate and then they offered me a ride home because i was in la and so i needed a ride home would have taken an uber great so generous and in the car i can see her in the rear room mirror the more i talk just going Because she was watching me kill her favorite person, I murdered Lucy in front of her, and just and it, and I've seen that so much. Like people love the character, and then they meet me, and they are understandably disappointed, and they cannot hide it on their face. But you know, I have feelings. <laughs> Lindsay, Lindsay Reichel, who I think you've heard me talk about him, he was my mentor from years ago. He always used to say, "You want to." turn up to the show, don't talk to anyone, do your show, and then go. That was his theory. Now, it, it, we live in a world where it's, it's all the opposite. You know, people want to talk, they want you to have dinner with them at the table, they want you to do the show, they want to talk, they want the show to go on, and they want you to keep performing. But having a character so distinct as yours, you do have that ability that you can switch it on and switch it off. Whereas majority of performers, they, they do have that terrible thing of turning up and you're saying, okay, the lights are wrong, the stage is wrong, this is wrong. And you're immediately betraying your character. You know, yeah. you, you can do that and then you can become Lucy and then you can go back to going like, well, that was wrong and you need to fix this and you need to fix that. You don't have to, you know, kill the character in that way. So you do have a big advantage. Yeah, and I think also in terms of like banter and playfulness, because, um, you know, I've done a couple of conventions and sort of the gold standard of conventions is the tech is terrible and it's not, you know, you could hire the best tech people in the world, but you're in a ballroom and they have limited resources and they don't have enough time to tech us and magic is hard to tech and we are bad at communicating what we need. A lot of it is the magician's problem and fault. And, uh, and I, we had a tech team at a specific convention that will remain unnamed. And every, I had four cues. Every other act in the show had at least 10 cues. I had four. Mm. I had four cues for 20 minutes four cues. I had a tech sheet, we had ran it, all the songs were labeled, and they got all four wrong. Yeah. Statistically speaking, that should not be possible. <laughs> but they got all four cues wrong. And Lucy got an extra three minutes of material out of it, and it was hilarious. Now, if it was me, I would never in a thousand years throw the tech team under the bus, because that is the biggest faux pas. It is so mm -hmm. unkind. Why would you do that? That is so unlikable and bad. Never. But well, Lucy can say whatever she wants, and it's immediately obvious to tech people and theater people that this is a character, and this is yeah. this, you know, the character is not aware of of tech. You know, she's just so she just was like, why did they? Who did that? Like, she, like she just pretended she didn't know the mm. guy, and she just was like, somebody is messing with me, and it was perfect. Mm. And so, not only do I have that leniency with the with the audience after the show, but also in the show she can do things I can't do because if you're doing a character, everyone's immediately in on the gag of this is not serious. Yeah. Like you don't mean this. I'm not really mad. And then, and then if I have to, I can go around and apologize for her actions later. And people are always like, Oh yeah, yeah, I get it. 
<laughs> with uh, Damon Everidge, Barry Humphreys used to present himself as her manager. And so <sighs> he, he had this wonderful relationship where, you know, she would be on stage and talk about, yes, that Barry, he's always taking my money and he does nothing. And it's this sort of fun relationship. So he would actually appear sometimes in shows as himself before Dame Edna would come on. And I wonder if there's going to be that sort of relationship. Is there a relationship between Carissa Hendricks and Lucy Darling? Do they know each other? Well, we, we teased that for the first time a couple of days ago on the cover of Jeannie, which was an image where both Lucy and Carissa are in it together and yes. just the two just of them. Quick plug, you're on the cover of Jeannie this month. <laughs> yes, I'm on the cover of Jeannie, the month that matters least ever in the history of that magazine. And Arian Black's on the cover of MUM at the same time. Yes, yeah, I, mess, I messaged her yesterday to congratulate her. Her picture's fantastic, it's, and it's a good article, really good article. It's, it's weird. Uh, who's on the cover of Linking Ring? <laughs> and, and, I don't Kayla, I wish. Ah. Um, <laughs> I wish. Uh, but so, so that image was, de was constructed by, um, by the photographer and myself as a deliberate goal, the, mm. with the deliberate goal of trying to communicate the relationship between myself and the character. And so it's supposed to show, like, me frantically overworked and just like trying to handle and she's drinking champagne and relaxing and that's and that is really how it feels it feels like i book all the gigs i do her makeup and her hair i sew the costumes i build every prop i do all the writing and then she walks out and does whatever the hell she wants she doesn't so you're doesn't, not a manager you're, you're her assistant <laughs> i'm i'm her I'm her bitch is what it is. <laughs> That's what it is. There's I do everything. There's a t-shirt in that. <laughs> I, I am Lucy Darling's bitch. I would buy that t-shirt. I would I have a to lot of, A lot of people would buy that t-shirt. <laughs> I've been, I don't know if you've noticed, I've, I've been drawing these, uh, I'll pull one off the wall here. Yes, I've been drawing these cats and stuff and people keep trying to, oh, it's not really coming off. Oh yeah, there we go. I've been drawing these things and people have been trying to convince me to, to monetize it and I keep joking like aren't I allowed to have like one hobby that I don't monetize <laughs> so are, you, been drawing them are, you, are you sending them out to people I am yeah I sent uh Lindsay Benner got hers uh Bonnie got hers uh, Moons showed up a couple days ago um I sent one to Lovick I sent one to my best friend Simon one just fell on the floor uh, there's a couple here that are for Eric Tate uh, but I just, you know, basically as soon as I make it, it has a home. But then there are these comments that say, you know, make a calendar or make a book. And I'm not saying no. I'm saying people. Look, I'm just doodling not great drawings Look, of rude cats. I'm sorry. If everything you do just happens to churn into mummy, you can't deny it. I suppose. I suppose. But I do have... Touch at the moment. I ha yeah, yeah, that's true. Everything I touch, do you right? Everything I touch is gold. It's been, it's been a really great couple of years. The trajectory has been um, fabulous. And it's part of why I don't have a place to live is because there's just no reason to. I'm just touring <laughs> so much. The lifestyle, the jet style. <laughs> You'll have to get a private jet and just park it in different cities as you travel. Yeah, I should get a pi private jet to live in because of yes. the homeless I am right now. I shouldn't say homeless. That's so insensitive. There are people who are legitimately homeless. I am not legitimately homeless. Homeful. Uh, but I like homeful. That's good. I, I am homeful. But uh, but I will say that pile of stuff represents 100% of the things I own, basically. You're so, a global global citizen. I, yes, citizen of the world, as as my passport will uh, will tell you. I am a citizen of the world. Now, the, the, the rude kittens are part of your quarantine uh, creativity. You should tell us about your, your pandemic um, adventures. Um, so early on in the, in the quarantine thing, and it's funny because this sort of came out of me talking to Tom Stone and talking to Bizarro. I, I was in a group message with Tom Stone and Bizarro about creativity prompts. And, uh, and they were a thing that, you know, I'd created the Spark deck a few years ago and it did very well. And I really thought it'd be fun to um, create like a structured creativity prompt. And so I pitched it to Tom and Biz and they both kind of went, um, yes, you should do that. We don't know what you're talking about, but you should do that thing. And I went, okay, well, that's, that's not really, a great start. So I built it. We're five weeks in mm. and every week there are at least 50 contributions to whatever the creativity prompt is. This week, the creativity prompt is order and chaos. A little video comes out on Monday. 
everybody spends all week on the Facebook group, like building stuff. I bit, I started drawing. I kind of thought I would use it to make new magic, but I, I just want to draw. So I've been drawing, but I also did make some magic and it's been um, like Nicola uh, is on there. She makes stuff all the time. Biz made some stuff, you know, pe people, you know, Tom Stone posts stuff all the time. You know, pe lots of people who've done this are on the forum. The link will be down there. The link, yes, the link is down below. Um, but it's great because part of what I really wanted to do is the video comes out Monday, you have till Friday. On Friday, I post a thing that congratulate that with your names, posting the congratulations for the people who've completed it. And if you want to keep working on it over the weekend, you can, mm -hmm. but the, there's a deadline. And so my hope is that people don't feel like they're piling up, right? I didn't want this to feel like homework. So you get a week and if you don't make anything that week, no, nobody cares. It's fine, but it's a really supportive community and it's really changed the way I make magic because so much of my magic is about improvisation and talking to people. And we had a prompt that was play and I made this cute thing and it in all everything from the method to the way I do it, everything about it is not the way I normally approach magic. So it's been, it's been, even though I started it, um, it's been really valuable for me. It's been really lovely to, to kind of have a, to know at least every week I'm doing one interesting creative thing. So we'll have a little look at your little, um, dog. <laughs> yeah. The, the play prompt video. <laughs> Come along, catch a half a lump. Sit with me on a muddy clump. We'll sing a song of days gone by. Run along now, don't be glum. Get you gone now, have some fun. Don't be long for the end is now. Let moments pass along and waste before your eyes. Watch with me in the borough grows. Come with me in the slightly toes. And never are skies wide. Come, 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 come along now. Run away from the humdrum. We'll go to a place that is safe from greed, anger, and boredom. It's so cute. I'm, I, uh, I've added to that routine since, and I'm going to be doing it on the Chicago Magic Lounge shows this week. I'm, I'm, I'm finaleing my piece with that dog routine, but we're, I'm also uh, having it appear, and then it's doing that sequence, and then I put it under a hat, and it still tries to crawl out of the hat, and then I vanish it at the end. So there, I've added to it. But that was, it was so surprising because it was like Friday at two o'clock, the deadline is six. It's when I normally post all the thank yous. So I hadn't posted anything for my own stupid group. And I had been staring at this little dog, which I've, I've cleaned up a little since that video. He's got more, you know. Dog-like. He's more dog-like, um, which I got in vague. This, you know, this represents my last time out of the house, yeah. really. Because this is when I was in Vegas with Biz and Shocker and everybody, and we went to the um, Pinball Museum, and they put coins in the machine to get me one of these little wax vacuum form figures that they used to have at Disney. It's a little Pluto. So like, and I just thought Pluto was so perfect because like Pluto is no longer planet, and those vacuum form machines are no longer a thing, and going out's not a thing anymore either. So this just represents all the things. <laughs> that are no longer and uh, I really wanted to use him and so so now like that stupid little video that I made just just like we did one take I posted it I didn't think anything of it is now in my repertoire <laughs> you said the Chicago Magic Lounge show is that an, another online event that's happening yeah, so it happens on Wednesdays and Fridays, and it's a cocktail hour show. There are four magicians doing close-up magic. It's pretty serious. Like we did a we did a full run today with a test audience, and we did a rehearsal on Monday. It's the most prep I've ever done for a live stream show, 
and uh, and there are cut-ins and segues and it's great and there's an audience you can talk to and then in the middle they take a break and they teach you how to mix a cocktail and uh, it's very it's perfect it's like right on brand for the Chicago Magic Lounge they're great shows uh, they take them very seriously uh, but I think you have to register and, and get invited because I think they cap them off at like 100 participants or something oh, that's good so so they're not they're not you don't have to pay but you do have to register I think so yes hmm. that is my understanding yeah, look into that definitely and you've got so many other things that are are going on still uh, like your bubble bubble you yeah bubble university is still up we've seen a huge uh, surge in not only just people signing up but people who had signed up a year ago were suddenly watching all the videos because we can track <laughs> that. We can see like the, the early video, the beginner video has m got more views in the last three weeks than it had gotten in the last six months. So people, people like learn bubbles. Cause I think bubbles are translate to like zoom and live stream really, really well. And also I did a, after, after we're finished disinfectant. Yes. Soap shows. So you don't have to worry <laughs> about, um, except for that a bubbles kind of like a, a tiny, a uh, breakable pod of your own breath. So yeah, there are... Don't, don't, don't push that angle. <laughs> there are concerns. Uh, but I did a birthday party bubble show fairly recently, like one-on-one -on -one private. And it was great. I sent a list of things, like they needed to have pipe cleaners, they needed to have soap, and they needed to have water. And then half of it was me sculpting and doing stuff for that kid. And then half of it was we built a bubble set and we I taught them how to do a couple bubble things. And it was... I think we did... 45 50 minutes and it you know felt like i made my money it was really fun and <laughs> they have sent me pictures of the aftermath which was really great and mom got the afternoon off basically <laughs> trying to keep the kids entertained so um i'm hoping that people are the people are setting up for bubble you are planning on using that knowledge and making money because i'd hate to think that people are spending money they don't have right now yeah and yeah. uh and if you do not have money for Bubble U and it's something you're interested in, please message me because we can definitely make arrangements. I know that a lot of people are in not great situations right now. So Absolutely. Well, the other thing you've got, uh, your, um, was it Penguin Lecture? Penguin Live, yes. That is another thing. If you want to see my Penguin Live and you don't have enough money, I do have a few codes. And so if you message me, I would be happy to help you out and... Uh, you know, everybody's struggling and I get it. So just message me and I would be more than happy to help out. I'm really, really proud of my, of my penguin video. It has like 55 five-star reviews and no, <laughs> no four-star reviews. And that being said, that it's not a challenge. Do not go on <laughs> penguin and give me the first four-star review just because I said this. Do not troll me. I was, <laughs> I was so proud to not get any four-star reviews. And uh, I do the show as Lucy. And then I do this, do some of the same material as Dee Dee, and you can see the difference in how the same trick can be interpreted in different ways. And uh, I was just so happy it turned out. And the, and I have to say, Penguin was so patient with me because to shoot two different live shows, one kid show, one adult show, and shoot all that material. Mm. And Dan allowed some of some ideas that he put into my work to be published through that that are brilliant and he should not have released because they're too good he should have kept those for himself but uh no i'm just really proud of it i was really happy it turned out i worked really hard on it and um but i will say i have seen so many people doing my version of the <laughs> any name drink in the last six months it's like the trick du jour now uh and so a little part of me is like oh regret Mm. there's always the challenge you you just have to um you either release it and people will use it with your permission your blessing and maybe you'll get a little bit of thank you financially for it or you just release it or you don't release it and you do it and not as many people but they'll still do it and you don't get anything for it. it's 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 always a challenge to to know what to release and what not to release yeah, I'm, I'm mostly kidding. I'm, I'm happy people are doing it. I want people to do it. I didn't mm -hmm. release any material I didn't want people to do. But that doesn't mean that when I see like that, it, there's a two people that recently have posted like it's their main promo picture of them basically doing that routine. And it's become their like career maker act. And part of me is like, oh, that, that hurts a little. That, that one. Oh, and stinks just, just a little. Just Get into the creativity group. Get into the creativity group. Say, okay, here's, here's Lucy's act. Use that as a starting point. 
<laughs> yeah, do your own thing. <clears throat> do your own thing. But no, it's it's fine, and I'm I'm happy that people loved it so much, and and that they're they're really using the material. Uh, it's just very flattering. And you have actually done exactly what I just said. Uh, take some of the other material and change it with your upcoming project. Uh, with of course, Books of Wonder. So I believe they have released or they have announced that they're releasing Dan's stuff. So Dan Harlan did every trick in the book. Uh, the Tarbell series, and it was great. And it drove him to madness. And as right, it should have, because when Kayla and I were approached to do some of the Tommy Wonder stuff, uh, it almost destroyed us. It was the most overwhelming thing we've ever done. So Dan was given the Wonder, the Books of Wonder. He went through, he picked what tricks he liked. He gave us the rest, and we pulled from that, um, I think, 20... I don't know how much they're going to release, so it's hard to say how many, but we did 20 pieces of magic for Penguin to edit down into whatever they want, and then it will be released as a, I, I think it's going to be released as a companion piece, or I don't know, there's not a lot of clarity right now with the way things are, because pandemic. Uh, but yeah, Kayla and I reimagined and rebuilt a lot of the, the stuff in the Books of Wonder, and specifically the stuff that we were interested in were things that are uh, not doable now. Things that are obsolete, they don't, those kinds of mechanical pens don't exist anymore. Or uh, that, you know, he talks about having, how to build a hydrostatic glass um, with acid. And that's, and it, one, it's an acid that's hard to get these days. And also that's not the safest way to build a hydrostatic glass. So I teach people how to drill holes in glass at home without shattering it, without injuring themselves. So we, we stayed true to the integrity of Tommy Wonder and we tried to come to it with as much respect uh, as we could, but we also didn't want to just parrot material that wasn't ours. So there's nothing in there that we didn't um, breathe new life into it. So our section, I think, is going to be called Modern Wonder because it's modern versions of, of Tommy's stuff. And you did, you did, a, <coughs> so you did it at uh, the Pella Theatre, like a little preview? We did. Yeah, we did a show called Reset that uh, a lot of people got to see, actually. It was one of the few Peller shows that uh, got to do every single show in its run because we had lineups. People, people found out, I think, that um, Kayla and I had written a show with 100% new material that we had never done before because we didn't want to give Penguin and, and, you know, ultimately the public mm -hmm. material that we hadn't really ran in. And so that's three shows a night, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That's a lot of time to work on stuff. And so everything we teach, we did in the show. So we had to find um, a narrative formula that would accommodate for that for, so that it didn't feel like just trick, 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 trick. Hmm. And, uh, and I can't really give away what it was because there's a chance we'll be doing it a, a thing. And so it's a little bit sensitive. But, you know, pe the word is out that we basically did a, a show called Reset where the audience made all of the decisions. They decided what trick we would do. They decided where things would go. It was a choose your own adventure that had, you know, eight possible endings. Um, and the ending is very unexpected. And then the show resets. And, uh, and we were really proud of it, man. It was great. It was, it was really fun. A few people came and saw it twice, which we were not expecting. Um, but of course, because it's a different show every time. So it makes sense that they saw it twice. Well, that's music to every magician's ears. Yeah, you do the trick and then you reset, ready to go again. <laughs> yeah, not that kind of reset. Uh, <laughs> definitely not that kind of reset. Resetting that show was so weird because um, both Kayla and I are used to working alone. And uh, the show is kind of potentially different every show. And it's all material we're not familiar with. So resetting the show is basically going, okay, that trick is set. That trick is set. Who sets this trick? Can you set that trick? okay, you set that trick, I will set this one. And it's just like every day, three times a day, we had to kind of figure out what is whose responsibility. But it was great. I mean, Kayla's a dream to work with and, uh, and it couldn't have gone better. It was so much fun. Absolutely, it sounds amazing. So that, that project is on the horizon, something to look forward to after the pandemic's finished. I, one would hope. We shot it last September and- uh, Maybe before the we, pandemic finishes. <laughs> yeah. And so hopefully it will be released at some point, but uh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to rush anybody to do anything right now. Just take it easy. Just, it, it, I mean, the whole pandemic is reset really, isn't it? We're, we're resetting 
everything. Everyone's just sitting yeah. back and going, okay, I'm going to reassess what I've been doing. Do I need, you know, do I need to travel as much? Do I need to do this sort of show anymore? Do I need, what do I enjoy? A lot of people I know are, are actually sort of sitting down and going, you know what? I've never really enjoyed doing kids shows. I'm going to stop. <laughs> They're making big decisions because they've had time to stop and think. Well, that's nice. I hope, I hope people are, are, uh, are using this time, but I also, and I've said this a couple of times, I also want to give people permission to not do anything useful right Absolutely. now. You know, you are grieving. You, we are all grieving. Even if you have not lost somebody, uh, actually lost somebody that you know that you're close to, you're grieving a loss of opportunity. Mm. You're grieving your old life. Um, you're grieving a loss of freedom. And if the way you cope with that is not to get a thousand things done and not to be creative and, and not to get your shit together, mm. if the way what you need to do right now is sit in bed and eat nachos and do nothing and call your mom, that is fine. And I, I think more of us need to be talking about, you know, you have permission to not use this time yeah, to absolutely. write a book. And a lot of people who are of my ilk, the Asperger syndrome type people who are sitting here going, Hey, no one's telling me I have to go out and be social and see people and meet people. I'm actually obeying the law. <laughs> I'm a hero. <laughs> yes. You see me right now. I am being well behaved in my <laughs> pajama bottoms. <laughs> we are going to wrap this up, but uh, you possibly have a trick you can show us. Sure. I have like, like 10 lined up. I'm trying to think right. what's going to be uh, the most interesting. Here's you know what? Here's what, I, here's what I will show you. I will show you something I don't normally do um, because, uh, because it is the kind of sleight of hand I am not good at. But I have used this pandemic time to work on this, um, this piece. And, uh, and, it, and I, again, I'm trying to like work outside my comfort zone and as I'm working a lot to music. So I'm going to play a little song for you and uh, do this piece of coin magic. And uh, they're, they're two half dollars. They're not going to be in frame when they go down, but it's not relevant to the trick. So I will put them down on the table, but all of the magic will happen in my hands. Uh, just, <laughs> and and I, I promise there is no weird funny business happening on my, on my lap. The, all the funny business is happening in my hands. But this is a pure sleight of hand piece, and I, uh, I, ju I just don't do these. So I think I'm going to do the scariest thing instead of <laughs> doing this trick I've done 10,000 times. You ready? Yeah? Okay, I'll start again, ready? do a ton of like pure hardcore sleight of hand i had to learn some spellbound moves to work on the tommy wonder project and i didn't really do anything with that information and it's just it's just been fun to you know i know we've only got two minutes of it but it's fun to work on things that are as far outside of my general wheelhouse as possible including this thing i just bought a um glockenspiel it's uh it's right here on the floor i bought a glockenspiel um i don't know what i'm gonna do with it that's what you do during a pandemic. What will I buy? <laughs> oh, I'm going to buy one of those. Okay. Yeah, I th my buying is a lot more controlled. I do have an, I have had this like lock and drill routine in mind for Lucy for a long time. And, uh, but also I now own a Glock and spiel. <laughs> Why do I suddenly have the urge to do a brainstorm session with you on the Glock and spiel? <laughs> Hey man, yeah. This sometime this week, I will make myself a cup of coffee. I will call you. We'll figure out a time that works for Canada and Australia. We will 
brainstorm. The routine, uh, Christopher Hart helped me a little bit with it when yeah. I was at the castle last time. And we, we got quite a bit of the way through um, fixing some of the creative problems I had with it, but it's not a finished routine. It needs help still. I could imagine. Uh, there's not, not uh, and again, <laughs> it's, it's yet another thing you've gone. I, I really need more stuff to carry that can be lost by the airlines. You know what? Shut up. <laughs> just shut up. I just, I like props. I like things. I, I like it. I like a stage to look full. And um, before the pandemic happened, it looked like I was going to start touring art centers and theaters. And so it would be more reasonable to have potentially four or five suitcases and an illusion with me. So I've started to think about bigger things on stage. And, uh, and now I'm like, people are not going to want to gather. What is well, my they career? Will. They will. They will. Well, you can continue thinking of these amazing bigger things, but uh, how about finishing us off with a song? Uh, no. <laughs> sure, I'll play, I'll play you a little song. All right, I'll All play you a little song. Here, ready? ready? Little song. That's my little song. Little song. A little song. Well, thank Literally you. Literally so a little song. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for taking us out with a little song. John Archer didn't even give us any music on the ukulele, so you're, you're ahead of him already. So there we go. Well, I played more ukulele than John Archer. I think I can now throw this away. That was my whole plan. <laughs> no, kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, yeah, at some point I will um, be able to play a whole song, but I'm very self conscious about my inability to uh, get the chords right. So at some point I will play a proper song for you. We'll look forward to that uh, at some other day. But thank you so much for spending time with us. We'll catch you later. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks for having me. Stay safe. Stay inside. <laughs>